Hi, so as part of the gasifier, of course, I need an air pump. And it's another one of those things with gasifiers that there are actually a ton of solutions. And of course, quite a few occurred to me. One thing that occurred to me was um, this thing, which is a little hand vac. It's a cordless battery operated hand vacuum cleaner. I figured I could pull that to pieces and it would be most of what I wanted. Obviously, another thing occurred to me was a blower from a car, which is a 12 volt blower. So I could use that in reverse. And then I remembered this thing. Now, ages ago, we did a video on these, which are the aluminium welding stroke brazing rods. And to demonstrate that, what I did was make this involute shape as a housing for a Tesla turbine. And here's the turbine here. And the turbine sits in that involute housing. Now, it's meant to run on air, which is why it's involute. When they used as pumps, these have a circular housing. When they used as air, they have an involute, which is this snail shape. So if I put that in there, you can see that it's much thinner here, much thicker here, and that drives it. You're supposed to put the air in there, air drives around there, and whizzes there. But it obviously can be used in the other way, where we spin that, and it should suck air in the centre and throw it out the side. And I thought, well, that's such a shame just to leave that lying around. Let's use that. Now, I have no idea if this is going to work or not. I just thought it was a shame to have such a lovely thing lying around. So I would finish the build on the Tesla turbine as an air pump with the involute housing and use it on my gasifier. Now, I'm not 100% sure if it'll work. So I am going to prepare the hand vacuum cleaner just in case, but I thought I'd share this thing about the uh, Tesla air pump with you. Now I have a particular way of doing these air pumps that I quite like. Sorry about the motorcycle. Uh, a lot of people, what they do is they build the stack with a central spindle. Now I've removed the central spindle altogether and I tend to build it on a thicker disc. So this is a disc of three millimeter aluminium and the central axis goes into that disc. The actual discs here are supported by that flat disc and they're made from roof, roofing stock with um, washers in between them. And then I get a great big circular hole in the center. So I quite like turbines done in that style. And we're gonna use that because again, it was ready made and the previous video goes into the details of how I made this. I'm gonna put that in there and I have a couple of bearings in these blocks and I've spaced these blocks just to give a bit more support because I plan on running this at quite a high rate RPM. So clearly I don't have much to do to this which is great because it's all just about ready. I need a cover on it with a hole in the center and I need some kind of support here for the motor and I've got this thing. It's just a bit of aluminium box section that I picked up as a piece of scrap and my intention is to alley weld it on there and then put a bolt through here to hold that so that it sits like that the motor can then go onto the axle and we can put a copper plate on. So let's get this alley welded. Now to alley weld it, all you do is clean off the surface of the aluminium and remember to scrub it down with a wire brush, a stainless steel wire brush, get a blow torch, heat, you want, heat the aluminium and then poke that stuff in there. Again, we've done videos on how to use this alley welding rod. So all I'm gonna do is weld that to there, drill it and tap it. Okay, so this is what I've rigged up. Now, oddly enough, this motor here I found in a little hand blender at the local Asda, uh, which is part of Walmart. Now, often these motors actually in hand blenders are synchronous motors, but this was a, a straightforward DC motor that takes the live input at, in the UK at 240 volts and just rectifies it. The motor's rated for 240 volts DC. That, <laughs> that's really weird, but it will run on a lower voltage and we're gonna start it in a minute. So all I've done is uh, cut back the little protector there and attach the positive and the negative. It doesn't matter which way around actually. Uh, it'll go one way if you attach the positive to positive and the other way if you attach the negative to positive because it's just a DC motor. So it doesn't really matter. But the fitting, which usually goes in there, just push straight on to the axle for the Tesla turbine. So if I get that little bit of voltage, then at 10 volts, it begins to turn. It's drawing about 40 milliamps. And as I put that voltage up, obviously it gets quicker. I'm going to put it up to about 60 volts. Okay, 
That's 60 volts. It sounds like an aeroplane taking off. Now I'm going to light a cigarette and hold it near there so that you can see the smoke going into the inlet hole here. As I said, the gas from the gasifier would be connected to here, which is why I put a plastic plate on the top of it, because I'll be remaking that plate to fit this to the actual gasifier. This is the outlet where the gasifier gas would be forced to go. And what we're watching is the smoke, and as you can see, it's just coming straight up there. So you should have seen the smoke pulled straight into this orifice here. Okay, so at 60 volts, that's actually running at quarter its rated speed because it's quarter its voltage. Now I've plugged it in the mains and I'm going to turn it on and we'll see what happens. It may go a little crazy. Okay, this is awesome actually. Probably scary as hell, but really awesome. So what I've done is I've put some super glue on things just to hold it together for the, um, the duration, really, so I can see what it does. I'm about to light another cigarette and watch the smoke. Um, I'm touching a 240 volt live circuit. So it's probably not something you want to replicate unless you know what you're doing. And you'll notice I've got isolation gloves on. Uh, but still, I can't recommend you go grabbing a live circuit. I'm about to do it and I'm about to light a cigarette and we'll see how this thing runs at 240 volts. Incidentally, at 60 volts, it draws about 50 milliamps. So this motor, it isn't drawing very much, even though the voltage is exceedingly high. Let's give that a go and hopefully you can see it. The smoke's going everywhere. <laughs> sincerely awesome. The bearings I've put in here actually can't quite cope with this either so I'm gonna to have to replace the bearings uh, that's why it's rattling like crazy. The um, voltage is really quite high but I do love this to be honest uh, and it is really drawing the air. When I put my face over this it gives me quite a blast actually and I thought that was pretty cool. So as a basic setup, I mean obviously it needs a bit of playing with, but as a basic setup I am loving this Tesla turbine. So I'll, I'll probably improve that by improving the bearings, but do love the setup. However, remember I talked about uh, a vacuum cleaner as a possible alternative. Um, this is the gubbins from the inside. Let me just to plug that in case I lean on the wrong bit. This is the gubbins from the inside of that little handheld vacuum cleaner. It's got a stainless steel impeller right there. The gas entrance is this way, and then it's got a fin thing where the gas comes out. And obviously, this is for the filtration. It's got a couple of lithium batteries at 3.7 volts. So this little DC motor, which is in fact all it is, is what powers this. Uh, there's a switch somewhere, if I can find it. I'm not sure which one it is. Ah, there it is. And if we turn that on... Pretty easy to see the smoke being pulled in and it does give quite a draft. It's supposed to last 15 minutes. 
Now that I think is really overworking that motor. I think that motor is going to get pretty hot pretty quickly. So I wouldn't expect a very long lifespan from this. But then, you know, it's not going to be running long, a sort of four or five minutes while the gasifier gets going. And the same thing with this one. With this one, if we want to run this at speed, we're going to have to step the voltage up from the 12 volt battery. But plenty of amps available because the amp drawer on this is so low. Anyway, I thought I'd show you the alternatives of what we're actually going to be using for um, the pump on to the air pump on the gasifier. First one is going to be this, really, because I do love it and I've built the whole thing, so I do love that. And the second one is probably going to be this because you can grab this from uh, a handheld vacuum cleaner. Like I said, I paid five pounds for this one and ten pounds for this one. Anyway, I hope you found the video interesting and thank you very much for watching.